budget program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 228 regarding a holdup at 439 South Broadway in the Pig and Whistle Cafe. The bandits are there now. That's all. Rosenquist. <laughs> products to Rio Grande's great cracked gasoline. Two new oils, the newest and finest sold in the West, Rio Lube and Rio Grande, Pennsylvania. Think of it, oils that will withstand any motor heat or car speed. You cannot break them down with the fastest driving and the hottest weather. Yet at the instant of starting, they will flow freely through your motor even in zero temperature. They cannot gum up your valves. Valves won't stick if you regularly use these oils. All carbon-forming elements, sludge, and other foreign matter that are present in many motor oils are removed from Rio Lube and Rio Grande, Pennsylvania. These oils have tremendous film strength, the quality that acts as a cushion in protecting the moving parts of your motor from friction and wear, thus ensuring long life and low operating costs for your car. Rio Lube and Rio Grande, Pennsylvania are completely de-waxed and de-jellied, making it possible for you to use a lighter weight oil, which cuts down oil drag and increases your gasoline mileage. They are the newest and finest motor oils in this market, yet they cost no more than many inferior brands. When you call at your Rio Grande dealers tomorrow for cracked gasoline, ask about these new oils. They will give your car greater protection over more miles at less cost than any other type of motor oil. Tonight's story is taken from the files of the police department of the city of Los Angeles. And we have therefore asked Chief James E. Davis to open our program. Chief Davis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A habitual criminal has no right to freedom. That is a strong statement. But from events that took place in the case we are to hear tonight, you will see why I connect that statement. It is my belief that parole laws should be tightened to make it impossible for old offenders to walk out of prison after serving a small part of their sentence. If such laws had been universally enforced in this country, at least one of the criminals involved would not have perpetrated the crimes we are to hear tonight. I believe that no police officer should be asked to risk his life arresting known criminals caught in the act of committing a crime. However, I shall reserve further comment on this case for the end of the program. block of South Broadway was packed with after-holiday bargain seekers. Above a doorway, a little pink pig danced to the tune of his own tiny flute, and the January sun streamed down on the teeming throngs. Beneath the pink-nosed pig, men and women passed into the mirrored cafe beyond. Into the cafe strode a man, obviously a stranger. He found a vacant place at the counter and gave an order to the attendant. Good morning, sir. Yes, it is, isn't it? Yes. What do you have this morning? Well, I'll have uh, orange juice and a couple eggs over easy, some white toast with coffee. Uh, want some bacon with that? Listen, did I ask you for it? Oh, no, sir. Excuse me. Uh, want the toast buttered? Uh, yes, please. And uh, throw some potatoes on with the eggs, will you? Yes, sir. Don't look now, pal, but you're being held up. Well, 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 Keep well. your trap button and you won't get hurt. Give me the ice. Listen, I, I don't... Pipe down. Here, give me that wallet. That's it. Now, just take that little black bag you got between your feet, and I'd be on my way. Thanks, Bell. So long. Taking the briefcase which the man had carried, the stranger walked rapidly to the door. His companion, standing beside the cashier's counter, joined him. Two seats away from the robbed man sat Special Deputy A.J. Brown. His keen eyes had caught the swift drama in the mirror behind the counter. Now, as the bandits reached the door, 
Brown drew his gun and fired. Stop, Danny, I'm shot. Let's see you. Get him, get him, the bandit. Stop that man. Oh, forget that man. Hold up there. Stop the bag. There's a sidewalk. Hey, hey, what's going on here? That man running down the street. Just help the man the rest of here. Well, get him. Uh, Never catch him. In this crowd. Yeah, if he stays out in the open, we'll have a chance. Duck it into Broadway. Let's go. Uh, there's a sail on down there. Too many people to ever get hold of that guy. Yeah, might as well take it easy and check up on the bird I shot. Yeah, it's a sin we'll never get through that crowd of women in the Broadway. And you never get to Hill Street in time to head him off either. That's right. Let's go back to the cafe. Don't know what's happening to me. Didn't shoot as well as he used to. Excited, probably. Yeah. One of the smoothest jobs I ever saw pulled. How so? Those monkeys walked in and took that fellow's briefcase as calmly as if they'd been pals of his. Yeah. Well, I see Risden's here. Looks like he's got things under control. Yeah, he got here about the same time you did. How's the fellow who was shot, Risden? Looks like he's paralyzed, hmm? hit in the back of the neck. Can he talk? Don't think so. Where's the fellow who was held up? Yeah, right here, officer. I was just telling this other officer here Mr. That... Lippitz. Yeah? I sent for an ambulance, Dries. You get Mr. Lippitz's statement. I'll take care of things around here. Okay. Now, Mr. Lippitz, what happened? Bill, I come in and I sat down over there and I gave the girl my order. She just started to bring my orange juice. Uh, no, tomato juice. Uh, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter. All right, matter. go in here, boys. Come on, make way, you people. Move on, move on. Give them room. Bill, anyway, she just left. The girl, I mean. When this fellow who robbed me come up and sort of leaned up against me. Did he say anything? Yeah, he said, uh, he said, uh, don't look now, but you're being held up. You have a gun? Yeah, sort of a short, uh, snub-nosed gun. How big? Well, I don't know exactly, but it looked like a cannon to me. Uh, what did he do next? Well, he reached in my pocket, uh, this one right here, and he took my wallet, and then he reached down and got my briefcase, and he just started walking out. Did you try to stop him? Oh, no. Well, I just loaded the one I shot into the wagon and started him to the hospital. Is he still alive? Yeah, he didn't hurt much. He'll be able to talk. Fine. Here's a pair of dark glasses I found on the sidewalk outside. Kid picked up this gun in the gutter. We got the briefcase in the wallet just outside, too. Other bird dropped him when he started to run. Say, hey, what's in that wallet and that briefcase? Hmm. That bird seemed to want it awful bad. Well, that was diamonds. Diamonds? How many? Well, about $90,000 worth. What? $90,000. No wonder the bandits were in a hurry, huh? Say, wait a minute. These aren't just tin horn holdup, boys. They've been casting this job, casing this job for a long time, if I'm any judge. This is a job for the robbery squad to get on right away. Within 15 minutes from the time the bandit was shot, Detective Lieutenants George Gibson and E.E. E. Rombo, together with Special Deputy Sheriff Brown, arrived at the hospital to question the suspect. Oh, boys, want to see our tough friends? And how? Rombo and Gibson here have a few questions for him. Ah, he won't talk. I promise you that, Rombo. Well, maybe not, but we'll try anyway. Confident, isn't it, Gibson? Well, Doc, we usually get him sooner or later. Well, hop to it. Good luck. Is he badly hurt, Doc? Oh, I don't think so. He seems to think he's dying. But I doubt that he's very seriously wounded. However, the bullet is pretty close to the spinal cord. You never can tell about those things. He may pass on. Hmm, that sort of puts us on a spot, doesn't it, George? Yes, it does. I hate to shoot a lot of questions at a fellow when he's in pretty bad shape that way, but on the other hand, we can't take a chance that what he knows will be lost to us if he does die. I don't see how you boys can afford to take a chance. Well, shoot yourselves, all I say. I don't see why the bullet didn't kill him outright. It doesn't look very serious now, but you know how those things are. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk to him. Lieutenant Gibson and Rombo won't ask you some questions. Go away, coppers. Oh, take it easy, Joe. We aren't going to hurt you. No, we just want to know who the bird was that was with you. Did he get away? Yeah, I missed him. I uh, say, so you're the mug who shot me, are you? Mm-hmm. I'll get you for that. Oh, take it easy, Joe. Now, don't get yourself excited. It might be too bad for you. You mean I might kick off? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> won't that be a joke on the cops? Are you willing to tell us about yourself, Joe? Sure. Why not? I ain't gonna be here long. I'll spill about me. Well, that's more like it. Don't get me wrong, copper. I ain't squealing on my pal, see? Why not? They didn't seem to worry about what happened to you. That's what you think. Eh, never mind, Skipper. What do you want to know? What's your name? Joey Ray. That's your real name? It'll do. What do you do for a living? I'm a fighter. Live in Los Angeles? For the time being, 
You'll be here a long time unless I miss my guess. Yeah. Who was the fellow with you? His name was Jack. What's the rest of it? I don't know. Don't try to kid us. I don't know. Where'd you meet him? Six in Maine. When? About an hour before we pulled the job. You expect us to believe that? Where do I care what you believe? Well, how'd you happen to know about those diamonds? I didn't know anything about them. That was Jack's idea. Yeah? How's that? He said he knew where there was an easy take. Wanted to know if I wanted in on it. I was broke, so I told him I did. He said it was over on Broadway. When we got over there, he said we'd go in and get a cup of coffee. I didn't know he was going to hold up anybody in that joint. Well, I saw you holding a gun on the cashier. How do you explain that? Uh, when we got inside, Jack shoves his gun in my hand and he says, stay here. I thought the cashier was a friend of his. That's why I just stood there and kidded with it. Oh, Brown, I understand this fellow had the briefcase when he fell. That's right. How did that happen? Jack, come over to where I was standing, handed the satchel to me. He said, let's beat it. Then what happened? I don't know. I started out the door, and then all of a sudden, something hits me in the back of the neck. I heard gunshots. That's all I know about it. You mean to tell us you didn't know anything about this holdup until you got into that restaurant? Yeah. Oh, you're lying, Ray. Yeah. Let's see you make me tell you anything else. Maybe you won't talk now, but you'll talk plenty later. That's what you hope, copper. Well, let's go. We won't get anything more out of him today. <laughs> Or any other day, Flatfoot. Well, how's it look out, boy? Not so good. Oh, all we got out of him was his name and a pack of alibis. Yeah, and about the flimsiest story I ever heard. No dope at all. All we got so far in this case is a pair of brown sunglasses risen found on the sidewalk. The gun the bandit threw away, and a blank overcoat that was picked up in the Broadway basement. Evidently threw it away as he went through to Hill Street. Yeah, this looks like a well-planned job to me, boys. Yes, it does. The fact that the bandit knew Lippitz, knew exactly where his wallet was, indicates that. Coupled with the fact that he didn't try to get anything else except the wallet and the briefcase. If he'd tried to hold up the rest of us, it might look like one of those spur-of-the-moment things. Yeah. No, I'm positive that we got a pretty smart set of crooks to deal with. Well, it's a cinch we aren't going to catch him sitting here. Let's check with Hopkins about the fingerprints on the glasses and the gun. Find any uh, prints on that gun, Hopkins? No. Well, how about the sunglasses? Well, I got one swell thumbprint off them. Just one print? Well, that means we'd have to look at 300,000 prints to find whom that belonged to. That's right. And even if we make a search of the single print file, we've still got 12,000 prints to look at. Well, that's impossible on the face of it. You're right. No, boys, I'm afraid you're going to have to get something more than this for me to work from. Hey, uh, is this the overcoat they found in the basement of the Broadway? The one on the table here? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Looks like Brown was doing some fine shooting at this, baby. Yeah, here's a nice bullet cut across the shoulder. What's that? Oh, looks like a spool of adhesive tape. Yeah, that's what it is. Can you get any prints off this, Hop? Mm, I doubt it. Well, might as well see what you can do with it. Here's the personal effect card of that mug in the hospital. Let me see it. Mm. Look here, George. Yeah? Here's a card that says, Star Cleaners and Dyers, Market Street, San Francisco. I wonder... Let's just... see what the San Francisco police know about this bird, huh? Hey, didn't Lippitt say something about having been in San Francisco when we questioned him? That's right. Come to think about it, he did. George, you know what I think? Nope. I think this is a well-planned job. Those two fellows followed Lippitt's down here and knocked him over. Boy, <laughs> they really wasted a lot of time, didn't they? I'll say. However, this isn't getting a teletype working to San Francisco. And we want Joe Ray's record. <laughs> reply to the teletype message was speedy and enlightening. Joey Ray, alias Joey Rich, had been arrested in San Francisco for robbery, but through a technicality had appealed from a conviction and his second trial resulted in a hung jury and dismissal of the case. Joey Ray had been turned loose to go his devious way unmolested. Gibson and Rombo studied the message for further information. Hey, George, there's yeah. another part of that teletype from the north. 
Any more dope on our boyfriend? Lots of it. Seems he had an accomplice in that San Francisco holdup, yeah. a fellow from New York. Hmm. But he escaped and is still at large, according to this message. Probably our pig and whistle boy who got away again. Got his name there? Yep. Nessie Blue. Sounds like a dress goods color. Yeah, doesn't it? As an alias of Bill Lewis. Dark, five feet six, 30 years old, professional boxer. Has a criminal record as long as your arm. Well, when it's a cinch, we've got his mug in our files. Well, let's dig it out and see if we can get an identification. Boy, if this is the right name, we ought to have a lead pipe sink on this. I hope we got something this time. Hey, Hopkins, let's see what you've got on Nessie Blue, alias Bill Lewis. Who's he? Well, we got a tip from San Francisco that he might be the bird Joy Ray was with on that diamond job. What did you say that name was? Blue. Nessie Blue. Or uh, Bill Lewis. Blue, huh? Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Mm. Yeah, here he is. Is that your man? Let's have a look at him. Well, fits the description all right, doesn't he? Looks like it. Well, what's wrong with checking his prints? Well, you've got something there. Try and make something of it. Now, let's take a look at this thing. Hmm. Well, it looks like it. Nope. Nothing doing, boys. Not the same prints. What? Take another look. No use, boys. They don't match. Are you positive? What's eating you guys? Sure, I'm positive. How long do you think a guy has to be in this racket before he learns his business? Okay, keep your shirt on. We'll take your word for it. After all, these glasses may have been handled by a half a dozen people before we got them. We don't have any evidence that this thumbprint on the glasses belongs to the holdup man. Say, George, huh? did you send for Brown and the other witnesses? Yeah, they'll be here in a few minutes. Well, let's show them a bunch of pictures and see if they can pick this bird blue out of the bunch. Okay by me. Give us a flock of mug pictures, Hop. Well, here you are. Here's about six of them. Come on, George. to the state reformatory for the next three years. 
And at the end of that time, order your return to the jurisdiction of this court for further disposition. That's all. Yes, sir. While the search was going on for Nessie Blue, Joey Ray became a model prisoner at the state reformatory for exactly six weeks. One moonless night, Joey Ray walked off the reformatory reservation and sallied forth for parts unknown. Early in April, interesting news came from Minneapolis. Nessie Blue had been shot and captured while staging a holdup in that city. Thorough investigation of his activities during the preceding four months established definitely that he was not in Los Angeles in January. Gibson and Rombo thus found themselves in a blind alley. Determined to run their party to earth, the two officers began anew their investigations. Then came a sudden break of luck. George, I got a tip on that diamond case. It's about time we got something on that deal. You remember that girl we picked up on suspicion? The one who lives out on 6th Street, close to Westlake? The blonde dame? Yeah. Well, she's due here in a couple of minutes, and she told me over the phone that she had some information for us. What kind of information? Well, that's probably our girlfriend now. Come in, Ann. Sit down. You know George Gibson, don't you? Ah, oh, sure, I remember him. How are you? Fine. And Rambo tells me that you have some dope on the diamond robbery. Well, I don't know whether it's worth much, but it's something I overheard in the lobby of the hotel where I live. And what was it? Well, I was sitting close to two men who were reading the paper one afternoon, and one of them said something about the diamond robbery, and the other one said, Ah, them dumb cops won't ever find that bird. They're looking for the wrong man. Dumb cops, eh? That's hmm. what he said. Then this other fellow, he spoke up and said, If they'd look around Frisco for Danny Williams, they might get somewhere. Danny Williams? That's the name he used. Wait a minute. I'm going to call Hopkins. Give me Hopkins. Fingerprints. They say where this monkey might be in San Francisco, Ann? No, uh, that was all they said about him. Just Danny Williams in San Francisco. Hello, Hop. Now, uh, look. Uh, see what you can find in the file on a bird named Williams. Danny Williams. Now, wait. These fellows you overheard, have they been living at the hotel long? Not very. One of them came from up north himself. I probably know something about this case, all right. Did they say anything else about this fellow? Only something about him running around with Joey Ray, that fellow who was shot. I'd like to be able to ask that bird a few questions. Hello? Yeah. Arrested San Francisco, 1932. Burglary. Oh, he beat the rap, huh? <laughs> okay. What else? Alias Nathan Katz? What's his description? Uh-huh. 150 pounds. Five feet six, 30 years old, professional boxer. Well, that's more like it. Oh, fight manager, eh? Immaculate dresser. <laughs> Wears tailored clothes. You got his prints? Okay, uh, check that print we got off that diamond robbery job against Mr. Williams, will you? Thanks, Hop. Well, looks like that was a hot tip, Ann. Yeah, I hope so. I've been wanting to do something to repay you boys for getting me out of that jam I was in. Well, that wasn't anything. We're just as anxious to help people as we are to send them to jail. Maybe so, but just the same, I'm grateful to you, fellas. Robbery Gibson speaking. They are? He is? Okay, thanks, Hop. Nathan Katz or Danny Williams, as you please, is the bird whose thumbprint was on those sunglasses. <laughs> Descriptions of Danny Williams went to police departments throughout the country. From Salt Lake City came news. Danny Williams, alias Nathan Katz, seen in Salt Lake today. Does Los Angeles want him held? Most assuredly, Los Angeles did. A prompt wire to that effect resulted in an intensive search, but the quarry had flown. Then on July 30th, there came news from San Francisco. Danny Williams being held by San Francisco police. Will Los Angeles send for him? The early morning sun of August 1st found detectives Gibson and Rombo burning the coast highway as they sped northward after the long-sought prisoner. On September 26th, dapper Danny Williams stood in the court of Judge William S. Baird in Los Angeles. Well, what do you think now, Danny? It's a cinch. Ain't I beat all the reps I've been picked for? You can't hang this on me. You watch. That's your new overcoat we do, Danny. Yep. Call Danny Williams. That's me, boys. Watch me do my stuff. You've already been sworn, haven't you? Yes, sir. Take the stand. Proceed with your examination. You're known as Nathan Katz and as Danny Williams? Yep. 
Ever been in jail? No. Ever been arrested before? Lots of times. Ever been convicted? No, they can't no rap on me. I move the answer be stricken from the record as not responsive. Sounded pretty responsive to me. <laughs> However, it's hardly speaking. Did you, on the morning of January 11th, enter the Pig and Whistle Cafe at 439 South Broadway and, under menace of this gun, take a bag containing $90,000 worth of diamonds from one Emanuel Lippitz? I never heard of him. Were you in that cafe on the morning in question? No, I was not. Were you ever in that cafe? Not as far as I know. Do you know a man named Ray, Joey Ray? Never heard of him. Did you ever see these sunglasses before? No. Ever see this gun before? No, I don't carry guns. Did you ever see this overcoat before? No. Do you know that the tailor's label in this overcoat is the same as the label in the suit you had on when you were arrested in San Francisco? Ah, no, you don't. I tore that one. You did what? Nothing. I never saw it before. I request the court's permission to have the defendant put this coat on and show the jury whether or not it fits him. Permission granted. Would you mind just showing us that this coat isn't yours, that it won't fit you? Sure, I'll put it on. It ain't my coat. All right. Right down here, if you please. There you are. I'll hold it for you. Thanks. There. <clears throat> you see, it don't fit me. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see if we pull it down on you like... This. Uh huh. That's better. Just let your shoulders down, Mr. Williams. I think you'll find it quite comfortable. <laughs> That's all, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Next to you. That is our case, Your Honor. The jury may retire. seem so confident, Williams. Too bad you have to have such a yen for tailored overcoats, Danny. Where did you find that coat? Where you dropped it? In the Broadway basement? And what is the idea of the adhesive tape in the pocket, Danny? I was going to take that guy with me if he got tough, or if he didn't have the diamonds with him. Still think you're going to beat this rap, Williams? Sure. Well, you'll soon find out. Here comes the jury. Have the jury received a verdict? We have, Your Honor. You may read the verdict. We, the jury, in the above action, find the defendant, Danny Williams, guilty as charged of robbery in the first degree. Well, Danny, looks like you didn't beat this one. Looks that way. Too bad, Danny. Yeah. Well, boys, you win. You hung this one on me. I didn't think you could do it. Too bad, too. I needed that new overcoat. a moment, we will hear again from Chief Davis. Friends, when I say that Rio Lube and Rio Grande, Pennsylvania are the newest and finest motor oil sold in the West, I mean exactly that. They are backed by the largest research and development laboratory in the United States. The same type of oil is used by eight major airlines, 150 railroads, fleets of ships, and motorists in 45 nations of the world. Rio Lube is a de-waxed, de-jellied, super-refined, 100% paraffin base oil sealed in tamper-proof cans and delivered to you through all the red and white Rio Grande stations at only 25 cents a quart. Accept no substitute for Rio Lube. It will give you greater protection over more miles at less cost than any other type of motor oil. Davis. In less than four minutes after the prosecution closed its case, Danny Williams, alias Nathan Katz, was convicted of first-degree robbery. He was sentenced to serve from five years to life in San Quentin prison. Thus did dapper Danny Williams come up against his first real detour on his road of crime. Since the story you have just heard was written, word has been received from New York City of the apprehension of Joey Ray for whom a bench warrant still exists. 
He will be returned to serve his original sentence. Thank you, Chief Davis. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Cancellation of broadcast 228 regarding holdup. Suspects in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rose and Quiz. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you.